Hey everybody, this is Prowl and welcome to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition tutorial. You see in my hand, I got a piece of gold because we are going to be building a gold farm. Some things have changed in 1.16. Unfortunately for the worse, we're going to talk about those things and show you guys how to make a gold farm that'll work now and a gold farm that'll work once a few bugs are fixed in the game. So let's go ahead and hop into a quick walkthrough now. So before we get started, there's a couple of super important things that you guys need to know. If you've used these type of farms before or have one in your world right now, it's probably not working correctly due to a bug that's creating a lot of lag. So if this portal farm is ticking really fast, so let's say, let me pop that back in there. Let's say I run this at a speed that will get you for four portals, about 3,500 ingots per hour, ultra, ultra fast, right? I turn this guy on. You see it's too fast. The portals the portals won't light. That's because of this new bug that's in the game. Um, whereas if I were to run just one portal off of this, if I pop these out and turn it on, and just run this one portal, you see it, it's ridiculously fast. It spawns pigment quick. It works absolutely fine. Turn that off. But you can't, you can't do that right now. So the fix is that you slow this thing down and I'm going to show you guys how to build this in the video. So don't worry. I'm just kind of giving you an overview right now. If I hook them all up oops, and put this repeater on four ticks, it goes slow enough to work right now with the bug. So keep this in mind, guys, that this this video right here, this design is going to work now when this bug is in place. And who knows how long we'll have this bug. It works right now. It'll get about 800 gold ingots per hour currently. And then when they fix the bug, you can simply just put this repeater on one tick or you can get rid of the repeater altogether and just run the redstone dust up here like you saw, saw me do earlier. And then this thing will run at 3,500 plus gold ingots per hour. So it is adjustable. So keep that in mind, that's super important. Make sure, this is how Minecraft decides what bugs to fix in what order. I'm gonna put a link to the bug report down below. You have to go click on this bug. A bug report, you gotta upvote it. You need to add any comments that you may have and you need to follow it. Though that is how Mojang decides what bugs are most important to fix. So make sure you do that, please. Again, down in the description box below. Let's go ahead and jump into how to make this thing. As you can see, it's actually not really that difficult. First thing we're going to do is build a trident killer. Now, this is one of my design. I'm not going to explain it in detail. We're going to build it pretty quick here. I do have a separate tutorial on it. I will give you guys a link to that. It should pop up in a little card in the top right corner of the screen now, and I'll put a link to it down in the description below. You don't have to use my trident killer. You can use other trident killer designs. You can kill them by hand with the sword, um, or you can even drop kill them if you want to. Uh, we're going to use my trident killer. Trident killers are the best way to do this because then you can use a looting three sword and AFK at this thing for long periods of time. Uh, we're going to start out with a little four block design right here, just like this. And on this side right here, uh, we are going to have a hopper facing outwards. That's just going to go to our storage. We're going to put a powered rail on top of that or a regular rail doesn't matter. Put a minecart, hopper minecart on top of that and delete out the rail. And that's what's going to catch our items right there. And then we are going to go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of building area. So we're just going to go around this guy one time and we're going to go around this guy a second time. Just like this. We are going to install our pistons. They will be facing here, here, here and here so you guys can see the orientation of those just fine we are going to place solid blocks beside those pistons just like that which way i'm oriented here get rid of this one because this is where we're going to be able to take our trident in and out and then we are going to put observers facing in that direction like that that direction that direction and then we will face one right about here oh and put a solid block right there too so this is what you should have you should have observers facing out you should have a hole right here observers facing out which are going to face these powered rails so you can see i can do this there and there 
So we have observers looking at powered rails. We're using powered rails and not redstone because powered rails actually update faster than redstone does. So it makes the trident killer a lot faster. Then what we're gonna do is we do need redstone here. So you see how this one's different. It can't go here because we want access there, right? So it's looking at that rail. We're gonna pull redstone across just like this, like this. And then we're going to put a block right here. So now you will see if I can, let me grab a, a switch really quick. I can actually turn this thing on. It's functional at this point. If I flick the redstone here, you see, we have a nice fast trident killer right there, already done. And I flip that switch to turn it on. Perfect, that's exactly what we needed. And then uh, what we're gonna do here is I am going to put some glass right here. And then I'm going to put some fences. There's a fence set, or uh, I'm sorry, fence gate. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put a fence gate right here and right here like this. And now we'll go ahead and build this up just like so. That way we have a nice drop shoot to drop our zombified piglins down. But your trident killer is all done. So now, and then this is your access to get in. So if I need to go get my trident, I can hop in here, get it or place it. Um, I know a lot of people aren't really familiar with trident killers. They're rather simple. You take the trident, you Throw it in, close this up, and then once this thing's turned on, that trident's fine. It never takes durability damage. It does not despawn or disappear. But if you're playing with somebody else and they want to get experience points, they're probably going to need to go in there, pick up the trident, and then throw it down again. They have to throw their own trident down. That's really the only quirkiness to it. And if you hold a looting three sword in your hand, got one right here in my inventory. If you hold that in your hand while the trident kills the piglins, or zombified piglins, I guess they're called right now, <laughs> um, then you'll get the XP, you'll not only get the XP from it, um, but you'll also get the looting three effect. So make sure that you guys do that. I have one small correction for the Trident Killer here. It's just the doorway to get in, everything else is fine, but you do need to actually do a fence gate right here at the level of the piston and another fence gate above it right there as well. That way you can more easily get over here to get your trident or throw the trident down and the XP still has a way to get down. If you did it the way I had before, I put a solid block there that, that prevents any experience points from getting down. Obviously that is no good to anybody. When it comes to your AFK spot, this part's really easy. We just need a little shoot for the XP to drop down. So go down to the bottom where you have this little hole looking directly up at your trap doors there and place in a few blocks like this and cap off the end of it. And this is gonna be your AFK spot. So what you can do is, whoops, I didn't need to add that many. We can sit right here. This is where all of our experience points are gonna to come to. And you can see I threw in a quick storage system with the row of hoppers going down, leading, that doesn't need to be there, leading into a bunch of chests. Of course, you could do an item sorter or anything else that you like, uh, but now we got lots of storage for all of our gold that we're about to get. Now, your platform here that we have, we made this 23 blocks tall. So you see right now, if you look in the top left corner, you see my Y level is 13. So we're gonna go all the way up to where we're standing on 34. Um, so that is 21 blocks. That will make the pigman die and ha he'll have like one heart or half a heart left. Um, if you want to drop kill them instead, you can make this platform a little bit taller. is perfectly fine as well. That, that part's kind of up to you. And what your preference is, I like to try to kill her better. And what we're gonna do here is we're actually going to come in this direction. We're gonna go 11 blocks, counting this one. So we already got one. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And we're gonna come this way 10 blocks, including this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then we're gonna make a couple little platforms here. Let me make that really quick and you guys can see what it's gonna look like. So you guys should have this now. We went 11 blocks that direction, 10 blocks in that direction, and we put a little border up around it as well. We actually need to build this side up a little bit higher. So if you want, go ahead and knock out one, two, three, and we're gonna raise that floor up to that level. On this side, you're gonna just do it too. So one, two, 
and bam, just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and drag across another row just like that. And then another row like this to build that up just a touch higher. And then also we are going to close off the back side here and then close off the back side here. Just like that. Now what you could do is you could put water here and put water here and you'll see it'll flow right to the edge. Get yourself some buttons. Those buttons at. Or signs will work too. Something to block water. We'll just grab these buttons right here. Because we're actually going to put water right here. Now the reason that we're doing that is we don't want any pigment to fall from up here and fall from a higher height to where they will die without hitting the trident killer. So this right here, even if something falls from up here, it's going to take the same the same amount of fall damage because it counts the fall from below the water. So now once you have that portion in, we're going to start building the portals towards the side that we are AFKing at. So in this case, this side right here will not have the portals. This side over here will. Okay. Now. The maximum size that you can make a portal is 23 blocks for the actual obsidian. So let's grab some obsidian. There we go. And this part's super important. Again, I'm going to say, if you're not paying attention, this part is super important. The pigmen spawn on what is called the positive side, the positive axis of a portal. So if you see... Look at my up in the top left-hand corner. You see when I move this way, the number goes up. 8, 9, 10, right? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That means the pigment are going to spawn on this side of the portal. So if I put the portal here, the pigment will be on this side of it. If I am facing in this direction, see we went from negative 91, negative 90, negative 89, etc. The pigment are going to spawn on this side of the portal. They always spawn on the positive side. I would like to take a quick break away from the tutorial to ask you guys to please subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure you check out my Truly Bedrock series. It is a survival multiplayer series where I play with 17 other really great YouTubers and make all sorts of big fancy contraptions like this quite frequently. Actually, I'm going to be making a gold farm extremely soon that will probably have a few extra unique mechanics that this does not have and make sure that you guys go ahead and click on the card up in the top right hand corner of the screen it'll take you to that series start from episode one we're still pretty fresh in as of this very moment hope to see you guys there let's jump back into the tutorial all right so our next piece of work is to get the portal in i've already built it i'm going to show one of them i'm going to show you guys what to do here so on the side that has the storage okay the side with the storage you're going to build that wall up higher so you can see where our floor level is here and then you guys can see where we had the walls before they were at that level right so you already had it one two three blocks tall you need to make this one side seven blocks tall so counting the floor one two three four five six seven this is how high we're going to raise our portals that way we have enough room for the mobs to get flushed into it and you guys will see that in a moment these portals have to be 23 by 23, meaning that from here all the way down to here is 23 blocks. And then from here all the way up to here is also 23 blocks. If it's any bigger than that, it's not going to work. If it's any smaller than that, you're going to be hurting your rates slightly. The larger the portal, the more pigmen you get spawning through it. So that's why we're making it 23 by 23. Now, once you get that big square portal in, you're going to space it out by two blocks. And once you have those spaced out, now you're going to be able to build the rest of the floor area pretty easily. So these side walls, you can go ahead and bring those guys up to about the floor or the bottom level of your obsidian, just like that. And then this floor, you're going to be able to bring, you're going to want to bring this out to come just past your last portal so you see we're one block past and then this is going to be where you wall it off just like this so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make this a floor area so go ahead and fill in all of this to be again one past the obsidian right there now you should have your floor in again it is coming one past the edge of the um 
where the portals are going to be. Just for point of reference, this is kind of how the direction that the portals are going to go. One block passed over here. And this part comes up to be just on the outside of it. And then we are going to place water going straight across like this. You should have that floor is eight blocks wide, meaning the water will run perfectly to the edge. This is where your pigment are going to fa fall in and they're going to run this way, run this way, and then drop right down there. So once you have all that in, you can go ahead and build these walls up the rest of the way. Go ahead and just bring them to the same height as the, um, as the obsidian right here. Once you do that, you can start finishing your portals up and get all four portals installed. And once you get the portals all installed, remember they're all the same height, then you can put in your dispensers. You'll have one dispenser facing that way right there and then another dispenser right here, and they are on the negative side of the portals. That way the pigment don't fall on them, facing in the positive direction, okay? So they are on the negative side of your portals, pace, facing in the positive direction. Go ahead and put one of these for each portal. After your dispensers are all in, fill all of the bottom ones with a bucket of water and get yourself a whole lot of flint and steel for the top ones because this thing uses quite a bit of flint and steel. If you have a way to easily get unbreaking books, I even recommend that you enchant these with unbreaking three. If not, regular flint and steel will work fine, but you're gonna want a lot of them the more you plan on using this thing. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get all of our materials together to make the clock. Last but not least, we need to put in our clock. This clock is pretty simple to use. We're going to put it beside portal number four, which is the portal that is furthest out from the drop chute. So we're going to go all the way down here. And I'm going to show you guys really quick how to build this and make it really easy for you. So you'll put a piece of glass diagonally under the top dispenser and then do a little zigzag with the glass like this. So one, two, three, four. Put a solid block right here, just like that face a sticky piston facing downwards right there and it actually for the second one if you want to use a sticky piston because you have them you can if you want to save on not using a sticky piston you can use a regular piston but it's going to face down right there kind of like diagonally down with a block gap if that makes any sense uh, we do need a piece of obsidian so let me put that there and then we need to place a redstone torch on the farm side of that piston right there like that and then we are going to place down some redstone redstone dust goes across here i accidentally got rid of my repeater so let me get that back there we go our repeater is going to face into there we need a piece of redstone dust here we need a piece of redstone dust right here beside this dispenser so put a piece of glass down put a redstone dust right there and your repeater right here go ahead and make sure you have that repeater on four ticks so one two three and four and then last but not least go ahead and take yourself a lever put it there and then put a block of redstone under it once that redstone's in this thing is turned on we're gonna go ahead and turn it off though like that and then we need to get all of these guys in the on position meaning that we need all of these dispensers right here to be on like that and we need to tie all of them into the system which is super easy we're just going to put a piece of glass there there and there and there and we're going to run this glass all the way down and then have glass going to each one of these guys now we can just simply take our redstone and run it to every dispenser that part's not too bad just get it run to all of them and there we go and then when we turn this thing on you see we have the portals flickering and we are getting zombie pigment and that is going to be it i hope you guys enjoy this a lot for your world as you can see i'm standing here got the xp coming my way i can get lots and lots of gold which is absolutely what we all want and need right now especially with those bartering farms out make sure you check out my bartering farm tutorial i do have one of those as well already there and i hope to see you guys in future tutorials and future truly bedrock episodes as well thank you guys so much have a lot of fun and you guys have a good one see you later goodbye